Well met, lords and ladies, Jake Cooper speaking at a warm, warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. Hmm, suddenly I feel a bit of mucus in my throat. Hmm. Anywho, the week. The week. So, after last week, you know, with all of the stuff like the Delamitri concert, the... I don't even remember what now. <laughs> But um, that I would be, um, that I'd be taking it easy this time, and you know, embracing the last, the last week of the summer holidays as I had, as I had mapped them out for myself. I said that I wasn't going to do anything that was, that, that was, job search related or something siren story related or musicals or anything like that, professional voice acting stuff until the end of August because I needed to actually use that break entirely to actually uh, recover from all of that. And uh, yeah, didn't entirely work out this week. Somewhat, but it depends. And that is basically entirely down to the and go. So again, I don't mind so much because again, one of my, my actual goals during this time was to uh, was to use what I could to actually focus on YouTube. And boy, was that a good decision. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, so we'll, we'll get to that. With the Muse and Girl, there have been, there have been a few, uh, there have been a few issues that have occurred behind the scenes. Nothing, nothing like anyone has fallen out or anything. We had somebody who actually dropped out of one thing, but uh, but yeah, that, that's um, what we covered. So one of our editors, who was actually working on, it turns out what turned out to be the longest scene in the actual episode, actually, um, <laughs> but and because as it kept on, it kept on being cancelled and such. Apparently, one of the things that, you, that happens with mobile gacha in the uh, in the particular in the particular style that's the uh, that the music girl has been done in since the very beginning is that is that it's um is that with anything to do with green screen it just it just ends up crashing the thing entirely. Now I, I wonder how this, what this actually looks like, to be honest. I might investigate this at some point, but what I suspect that to mean is that whatever editor, uh, both this, both this, whatever editing software, both this editor and uh, later on I discovered Emily was doing the same thing. Uh, well, I didn't tell that later on. I knew that from a while ago. Whatever one they're both using, uh, I think the issue it has is with multiple layers of things. And th th this not been really fully clarified because I don't know. Depends on how the person like articulates this, but this is just my my personal theory, having never seen this stuff before. Or at least I've seen the end results of it, but not really from from the uh, the production level. So what I think really happened uh, was that we just that was that. If you try and do something like, um, I think it might be Kindmaster or something that has this issue, but who knows? It could be QCut, whatever. But I've, I've heard a lot of people, whenever I've been reviewing mobile gacha stuff, you know, like Timmy the Bad Boy was made on mobile and stuff like that, was that, was that importing other sounds and things into, into the actual software itself causes it to lag and then eventually you crash and delete because you know you're trying to, because it's draining out the phone storage and of course phone storage I am keenly aware of as of the past few weeks having this battery not be uh, fully drained because I keep going to move the, uh, the stuff from Vienna off of it is, a, is way more limited than a computer one's and I'll be the first to admit, I've had storage issues with my other computers as well. Among a slew of other problems, because, you know, 
the machines end up being so old by the time I get rid of them. But uh, but yeah, that's neither here nor there at the moment. We'll talk about mobile for the time being. So with with that, if the issue, of course, was like the, was the sound and multiple layers, then conversely, that would be the same thing if you were trying to put another video track on. In case people don't follow this, I should have explained because I know not everyone uses editors and stuff, and I've got a lot of people, you know, in the family watching, trying to figure out what on earth I'm saying. Uh, they're all going to rush to Cameron and go like, "Camera, what's he talking about?" No, nah, it's, it's fine. Uh, so, so, um, <laughs> so basically, just to, just to uh, just to clarify, what what happens if you put something in an editing software? Is that or is that is that it will appear? It will. It will. You can drag the thing, the file in from your computer, and put it in to make changes. You know, you can cut stuff out, you can modify it in whatever ways you want. But what it does is it loads it on a timeline, and the timeline has audio tracks and video tracks that you can actually you can actually use, and the, and both those are on are on separate layers. So what a lot of people do is if you see like an image pop up in front of something, that's another video track that's on top of the one that's already there. That's how, that's how they work. That's, that, well, that, that, that's, like, that's like the basics of it. So I guess that, I, I guess, that, well, I, something that I found recently is that if I'm, because a lot of the, the gotcha scenes that I end up doing, like for example, the lab scene of them, the lab scene, from season two of the Mutant Girl, also scene five of the next episode of the Mutant Girl, which was the one that I had eventually assigned myself under Aiden's recommendation, and then eventually scene one, which was the one that uh, we had the editor drop out from, as well. All of those end up being very complex, and the more complex they are, the more layers they require. So again, I've had that issue where it ends up going super slowly. In fact, I actually think I might have found a solution for that, but just to get the basic explanation out of the way, I guess with a phone, the simplest version is just doing one thing. Which honestly explains to me why, to this day, there are still so many gacha tubers that, that prefer to use the screenshot method because with screenshots, you're just putting them all on the same, on the same video track. And if you want to add sound, I think some applications actually, there's some editing softwares actually have inbuilt sounds that you can put on. It's way easier, and it only takes those two layers that the application can handle. Again, that's what I think because when when I reviewed Taming the Bad Boy, that's what Mimi told me was a thing. And it also somewhat explains why, why for the first um, three odd years of Gacha being really popular or gaining traction, so 2017, 2018, 2019, that no one really deviated from this. So it, it has it has kind of made me think in a way. Because one of the things that I end up, I end up go, uh, like being, uh, going back and forth on, is when stuff like Unbounded comes out, which was another thing that I actually reviewed this week. When stuff like that gets released, and you know, and that's that's the result of animators, a full team being around, and so many external softwares that essentially the only gut, the part that makes it connected to Gacha is, of course the actual exports of the characters themselves. So, so really the, the, the gacha content that, see, that, that you know, gets the most effort now hasn't got much to do with gacha at all. And the reason I'm of two minds about it is because on one hand, I understand that ruins the core idea of what made gacha so appealing and popular back in the day, and that is that with, the, with this simple software, you know, anyone could pick it up, make a scene out of something, or, you know, make an episode, whatever you want to do, and tell whatever story was on their mind. Of course, it happens the stories that were on their mind were the ones they'd already seen, 
and therefore those would go to the back again, but that's a whole separate issue that's been covered to death. In this case, having, that, having all of the, the, those teams and stuff, it sort of defeats the purpose or like raises the bar of entry for people trying this stuff out. And I've compared this the gacha to like a microcosm of cinema before, but when cinema first started, it's my understanding that any, you know, that any, basically it's kind of like what YouTube was. Anyone with a camera can, well, YouTube still is really, anyone with a camera can, can, can make something. You know, very, but however short it might have been, and you don't even have people talking or anything. You just made that, uh, just made the action that you needed and somehow managed to, you know, edit down all the actual physical film and everything to to uh, broadcast somewhere else. And that created an entire industry. Animation, of course, was something different because the first piece of animation that we've, well, the oldest one we have on record is when somebody just drew everything frame by frame themselves. It was a dinosaur eating a plant or something. But yeah, cinema itself, kind of like that. Which... Yeah, and then, of course, nowadays, it's, it's, it's clear to see that you need, you need a, you know, like a high budget of you know, millions, sometimes tens of millions, to even actually have a hope. Part of that is also due to marketing, because most of the money from films actually goes into... No, goes into the big budget ones goes into the marketing of it. So yeah, I can somewhat understand that. But yeah, having, again, having been, fi been, been on a film set last year I can, I, I can tell I can tell you that they, they take they take sometimes entire days to be prepared to film 30 seconds of content and that's just the standard no one thinks about that anymore so yeah unfortunately that yeah big big bunch of stuff like that unbounded the music freaks life of bumblebee you know whatever it may be it represents how that's being, that's being somewhat lost. But on the other hand, it also represents how the same people who started off doing that are now focusing so much on quality and they have a loyal audience to actually back them up. I wonder if somebody were to release a high budget gacha thing like that with an equally good story and I wonder if it would do as well or not. It depends. I mean, I've always said story first, so I can, I can only guess that's what would happen. But, yeah, who knows? Yeah, again, the reason I'm, uh, and the other reason I'm of two minds of it is because that's kind of essentially what I tried to start doing. I tried to, to bring my expertise of, of editing softwares and my, at that point, three years of experience using Vegas Pro 14 and my connection with other people and my friends and stuff to actually create voice acted content. And that's because I saw that's what Afmal did. Because um, cause in, in March 2019, and maybe some February, I can't remember exactly when she started, but Afmal did a bunch of, um, a bunch of gotcha parodies. I mean, essentially, Afmal became the, the, the most popular gotcha tuber of all time at that point in one fell swoop. But, uh, and, uh, and that was, of course, you know, with her high production stuff. Not that she needed it, because obviously she, of all people, had the following to support her doing something normally. But she also had a team of voice actors, so it was always going to be voice acted. And she said herself that she appreciates when gachas are indeed voice acted. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the whole thing. And yeah, I um, and who knows? Maybe maybe somewhere in the recess of my mind, I thought, "Ha, huh, what would who wouldn't it be interesting? You know, if Afna herself came across this particular show, if doesn't have a of reacting to gotcha things and sees that it's a full production now or something like that, you know, because we were all Afna fans and Buttercorp at that time, and a lot of us still are. So yeah, who knows? Fun fact is, my understanding is that you did in fact watch episode 7 of season 1 but uh, 
but I won't, I won't get into that story because I promised that I would not. So, yeah. I can't confirm it anyway because that's just what I've been told. If so, that's obviously amazing that she even saw it to begin with. I don't care she didn't react to it, I just care that she saw it. Anyway. Because of that, I was trying to, I was trying to elevate that kind of thing. And even though I didn't know Meadery Stories had already made progress in terms of what was visibly possible, as well as, well as depends as well as story-wise. I will say, for the time, he made some great strides as well. <laughs> but yeah, it, um, it kind of makes me think that, yeah, I, I, guess, I guess from my perspective, I didn't, I didn't clock on to the fact that because of what I had access to and, uh, and what I was able to do, I, I, I was representing the birth of that kind of experience coming in. I guess because the music girl didn't take off the way that a lot of other gadgets were at the time, even if they didn't, if they, if they had much more of a, a shoestring budget, and and I will I will say this: some of them had pretty appalling stories. It really, uh, so yeah, it was it was a it was an interesting time. So I don't know what to make of that phenomenon. Really, is what I was essentially getting at. But yeah, and, and obviously there's, there's nowadays where I have basically, I, I've, I've basically, like while I was even still thinking about this and between Unbounded coming out and reviewing it, I was essentially coming up with a way to make <clears throat> swimming physics actually work. So again, finding a way around something and using the resources that are, that I had and that was after the person dropped out because that was for the scene that, that we needed. So yeah, I've been, I've been doing that. And it does, it does make me wonder, because of course that's the visual upgrades and the, and the increase in editors and stuff. That's really been the reason that the Musing Girl ended up, being so, ends up becoming so delayed. But, uh, but yeah, I can't... So on one hand, I guess, you know, I started the process of becoming like one of those teams that you see nowadays, even before those teams were really actually a thing. And now that I'm, now that I'm realizing that that might have somewhat been a mistake to do, the process has already started and you can't stop it because, you know, as much as I want, as much as I could try and go back, the Mutant Girl production value can't decrease because, well, you know, who on earth would do that to, uh, to their show on purpose? I know that some of them have their budgets cut and things, so they sort of have to in a way. But that's not really, that's not really the same. So yeah, I don't know. I have also been trying to, to trying to uh, still find ways to be more efficient about the stuff that I do, and still find more ways to um, find more ways to to more, more stories to produce. And I've been doing some of those in the meantime, of waiting for music girl scenes or the intro, which is the only part I've got left now. The intro. Uh, so in between waiting for that, that stuff, I've been working on other things. I think, oh yeah, I could do, I can do this and just, you know, make it a little bit lower production value so the music and the music girl will stay the same. Or, I don't know, just keep rapidly increasing beyond my, my limited control of it. But I don't know. That's always why I feel somewhat, somewhat less comfortable reviewing stuff like Unbounded. I not that I won't do it. It's not like I won't enjoy doing it, because I do. And that was evident. I mean, I think at one point Josh even said to me, hey, thanks for putting a smile on uh, on every Gatchetuber's face. So yeah, I will gladly review stuff like that. But the one part that makes me feel even slightly uneasy about doing that 
is because, well, A, it's, you know, it's um, <laughs> something beyond my, uh, maybe beyond my wildest dreams of being able to actually do because obviously the bigger, the bigger you're following, the bigger the team. And I haven't actually got to that stage. Um, but, um, but, the, but yeah, that was, that's like a side thing. Really the main thing, the B, B is, is that I really do prefer looking at, at the, uh, at the smaller stuff, at the people who are doing, the, do, doing the best with what they actually still have and giving them somewhat of a, somewhat more of recognition. It doesn't matter if they've, they've received like hundred thousand views for it or, you know, tens or, I don't know, two or something like that. I, I like, I like of giving, I like reviewing stuff where I can actually really give advice to people. I'm mostly about story or thinking about what tools they have already, some way to improve that. In fact, I can do that for my editors as well. I suggested to them that if they, uh, if, um, to both the editor who dropped out and Emily, that if they took, if they took like the PNG images that you can actually do and post them through, that's what I did for the, uh, for the water physics and the scene that I was talking about. And actually it ran way smoother than if I had just used the videos because they were saved as video f uh, files that you, that you get from, you get from green screening everything. So actually, yeah, and that, that goes for Alfred Academy as well, because that's what I wasn't doing back in the day. And that's why that's that scene as well, even before the lab one that I was talking about the mutant girl, that's also ended up being drained. So yeah, honestly, that's, that's kind of, uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. And I try to actually emphasize that could be a thing, but then again, if it's, the issue is layers, then all I can really suggest is, the that's even before, PC power. Yeah, who knows? Then again, you know, if you ever see a scene that's not really, um, that hasn't got the same lip syncing or animated mouths in the Mutant Girl, that will be the reason why. In fact, maybe that's actually the real reason why some people take the mouths and put them on separately people someone could figure out in the fallen angel scene that i did that's test for i did one one character with the regular mouths and one with the animated ones and yeah people were focusing on that so you could tell eventually but i should have just what i should have done is just said oh in that scene i in that scene one of them had one thing and one of the other could you tell the difference should have done it that way but oh well i don't know yeah some that was what I was doing for angels, which, yeah, I guess was, um, I guess kind of leads me on quite nicely to the last point I wanted to make here. Because despite that, of course, the Mutant Girl has not been the only thing I've been working on this week. That would have actually somewhat have retained my, uh, my already limited sleeping hours. No. What I've also been doing a lot more of is, is streaming. Which again, is something that I like doing because, A, it, it makes me interact with people directly. Which I which I love, and uh, and B, it seems to really be paying off recently. Like occasionally for the past few weeks or so, there would there would be a stream of mine that essentially gets like um, that, that instead of getting the usual the usual like thirty something views from the VOD archive or th up to fifty sometimes sixty seventy. Some, somewhere within that range, by the time it's uploaded, um, there will be some that get, that, that some that get hundreds, you know, 200, 300, 600 at one point. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting, because that, that now means that some of the stuff that I just made recently and just plopped on to my channel from Twitch with minimal cuts actually ends up has ended up outperforming some of the stuff that I spent, you know, months doing. And I don't mind this. I don't mind if my streams outperform the Muse and Girl, or if I look at my dashboard and I see that one stream that I've done recently has 
achieve the same amount of views in a day that a musical episode has done throughout. Because that's still something people are enjoying. And actually, and actually, it's much easier. It's much easier to make. And it also goes back to what I said about gotcha stuff at the beginning, you know? The, the, that, um, that the high bar of entry doesn't need to be there. I mean, it's, it's, it's great that people are watching stuff, you know, especially, you know, that features me in particular. You know, I'm, I'm, that sounded egotistical. I mean, like stuff that features, like, what I am as a person, you know, the things that I have to say about whatever, and the fact that, you know, I make them laugh and smile and can entertain them. That's all I really want to do, honestly. Whether it's through the medium of story or whether it's through the medium of myself. As well as, of course, lend a helping hand with ideas and such. That too. So, yeah, really... <sighs> hmm. I've got three minutes of space to actually get this point across. Yeah, so um, it, was a, it was a huge surprise to me, but a pleasant one nonetheless, that there's a video of mine that's the uh, review of episode nine of... Um, of Starlight, Mighty Five Years Later, that has not only gone past the hundreds mark very quickly, but then went into the thousands. I continue to grow into 2,000. I think that makes it the tenth video I've ever made that that that, go, that has actually achieved 2,000 plus views. And if you look at the uh, the VDI Cube extension I have, it actually it's, um, it actually tells you like a views per hour or something it's getting. So I can look at the streams I've done since and see some of them are like, you know, one view per hour, two views per hour, depends. If they've just been released, it can go up to like five views per hour or something like that. That one, peaked to 20, has been going down a little bit over the days. That's, that's the nature of YouTube. And has also, last time I checked, which was yesterday, was at 14 still. That's the video that got the views of the day that the music got hadn't done, you know, in a while, like I said before. So yeah, it's actually, it actually brings me back to the days of the truth about Travis in a way. As in, as in when that video came out, I expected nothing of it. And it just, and it just then, with more comments and more people coming around to check on it and having a conversation with me about Afmal, then that that changed the direction of my entire channel forever because the pipe dream that I actually had for what that could end up being ended up not being a pipe dream at all so yeah once again Afmal content seems to be really give it they're really giving exactly what it was before and those view counts they're the same ones on the streams now that my theories got back in the day when I was getting the most views. And for somebody who's achieved a thousand subscribers, getting up the watch time that I've got, that's, uh, that's, that's quite important. So streams, again, really help with that. So I've been working on that too. Who knows, if I premiere the musical season three, perhaps now more than ever, is the best time to finally finish that project. We shall soon see, but thank you all for supporting both of those things. I hope I don't actually overexert myself so much on these things before because I have to actually prioritize other stuff now, once again. But I'm very glad that I made the most of the summer that I gave myself. So please leave a like or dislike because your opinion matters and subscribe if you're not already. And on that note, until next time, thank you all once again and farewell. <laughs>